First, we can create a method that will validate the passenger information. Once the user enters the passenger's name and seat, we need to validate that anything was entered at all and that the seat has a valid row and column. Remember, we have 10 rows of seats and 4 columns, A, B, C and D in each row. So let's create a method that will return a boolean, true if all input is valid and false if it isn't. So I'm just gonna create a public boolean method and I'll call it is valid passenger. And we need to pass the passenger information in it as arguments. So we pass the name, the row and the column. Now the row is an integer, however, remember we pass it as a string because all input is just a string. And then later we will perform the conversion to integer. So we will pass the string name, we will pass the string row and string column. So first let's check if the name was entered at all. Here we can simply check if anything was entered or basically just check if the input is equal to blank. So if our name dot equals just empty, then it's a problem, it's an invalid input and we can display an error message. But before displaying the message, let's also trim any white space that the user may have in the name text box. So it's going to be the name dot trim and then we will check if it equals empty. All right, so if it is blank, then we need to inform the user and remember we have the error message property so we can assign the error message to it. So our error message will equal simply saying name is required. And there is no need to continue to do anything else because if the name is not valid, we simply return false right away. So we will return false, meaning the input is not valid. Next, we can validate the row. Again, this is supposed to be an integer and we want to make sure it is between values of one and 10. Since the row is passed into this method as string, we can create an integer variable that will hold the converted value. So after this if statement, we'll create an integer and I'll call it valid row. And remember, we are using mask text box that only accepts numbers. So we could simply check if the value is between one and 10 because no alphabetical value can be entered into the text box except one. And that is when the user doesn't enter anything at all. If we try to convert empty string to an integer, it would of course fail. So we can use try parse method of C sharp. We could try to parse the value the user entered. And if it is an integer, we assign the integer value to the valid row variable. Then we can check if it is between one and 10. So let's do an if statement and see if we can pass the integer as try parse. And what we are parsing is the row, which is a string. And we want to see if it is an actually an integer. And if it is correct, if it is an integer, then we will out the value into our valid row variable. However, we want to check if it is not parsing correctly, because if it is not, then we can simply return the error message like we did when the user did not enter any name. So we will simply use the exclamation point as not. So if it is not parsing as integer, then it's an invalid input and we will display an error message. So if this parses though, then we still have some validation to do. We need to check if the row is between one and 10. So if it is not parsed as integer, or if the value of the row is less than one, so if the valid row is less than one, or the valid row is greater than 10, then any of these conditions means that it's an invalid input, either it's blank and user did not enter anything or the user did enter a number, but it's less than one or 
it is greater than 10, then again, it's an error message that we display. And in this time, we will simply say that the valid C row is required. So our error message will equal valid C row is required. And once again, there is nothing else we can do here because it's an invalid input. So we will return false. So if we get past the name and row validation, we still need to check if the column is a valid letter A, B, C or D. And this is an easy if statement because we can directly check the value in the text box. So we'll create another if statement. And this time we will check if the column that is being passed as an argument is equal to A, B, C or D. Or in this case, we are again checking the negative. We check if it is not equal A, B, C and D. And in that case, we will display the error message. So if the column is not equal to A and the column is not equal to B and the column is obviously not equal to C and finally it's not equal to D. So if any of this condition is true, meaning the column is not A, it's not B, it's not C and it's not D, then we have an invalid input. So we can do an error message and we can assign it valid seed column is required. And again, after we display the message, we will simply return false. Now there's one little thing and that is the possibility that the user enters lowercase or uppercase A, B, C and D. So to avoid having a separate check for lowercase and uppercase letters, we can simply convert the user input to an uppercase and see if it matches the uppercase A, B, C and D that we coded here. So we will convert it to upper in all cases. So I'm just going to copy this and place it right here. So finally, if we get past all three of these validations, we have a valid input and we can return true. So after all the if statements, we can type return true because it passed all the validations. Now, just because the input is valid, it doesn't mean that we can assign the seed to the passenger. That's because the seed could be already taken. So let's create a method that checks if the seed is taken next.